Welcome to the Quick Train Modeler video training series. This video will introduce you to AGL analysis. AGL, or above ground level analysis, is a powerful tool within Quick Train Modeler. Most LiDAR datasets contain elevation that is relative to sea level. Using the AGL analysis tools, you'll be able to measure the height of features relative to the ground. While useful for a variety of applications, AGL analysis is particularly valuable for the DoD community. Vertical obstructions, such as towers and utility lines that can impact helicopter operations, or walls that can impact ground operations can be accurately measured. Finally, AGL analysis provides a mechanism by which to essentially peel away overhanging canopy and locate features that would otherwise be obscured. There are two ways to compute AGL within QuickTrain Modeler. The first and quickest way is to use QuickTrain Modeler's auto-calculate tools to estimate the ground surface. The second method is to use an existing surface model. If your LiDAR data includes classified ground returns, it's recommended to use this second approach because it's more accurate. Let's begin by loading some LiDAR point cloud data into QuickTrain Modeler and then using the auto-calculate ground estimate approach. You'll notice that in this point cloud, the elevation of the ground surface generally increases as we move from west to east. By using the AGL Analyst tools, we'll be able to remove this effect. The AGL Analyst tools are available under the Analysis menu, AGL Analyst. Under Calculate Ground Estimate, I have the button selected next to Auto Calculate Ground Estimate. It's important to note that the Auto Calculate method is just an approximation, and there can be errors, sometimes significant ones, associated with it. The first step for the Auto Calculate Ground Estimate approach is to select the grid cell size. Choosing a finer grid will result in a ground estimate that more closely follows the terrain, but this is going to increase the chance that large objects, such as buildings or trees, will be interpreted as ground. If you increase the cell size, it's less likely that these above ground features such as buildings and trees will be interpreted as ground, but subtle changes in the terrain will not be captured. Let's stick with the default settings first, and we'll click on the Calculate AGL button to run the analysis. Once the analysis is complete, you'll notice that both the minimum and maximum AGL values are computed. You will typically want to use different values than the minimum and maximum when you display your AGL results. So under Display AGL Results, let's use the minimum and maximum of 0 and 10 respectively, and then click Set Manually. We can then apply the vertex colors, and then we'll close the AGL Analyst tool. Turning off the vertex colors, which stores the AGL symbology, and turning on the height coloration, allows us to confirm that the AGL Analyst has succeeded in removing the elevation gradient that runs from east to west. Using the Point Query tool, we can find the AGL heights for individual points. To do this, hold down the Shift key, scroll the cursor over a point, and click the left mouse button. Within the Point Query window, scroll down on the right-hand side. You'll see that the AGL value is displayed. In the case of the point we just clicked on, which is the roof of a structure, we can see that the height is approximately 7.5. Zooming out a bit, we notice that there are some limitations associated with the auto-calculate method. Specifically, there are some subtle changes in the ground elevation that are not captured using this method. We would want to go back and adjust the grid cell settings to find the one that best suits our particular data set. Let's now examine the second approach to AGL analysis, in which we use an existing surface model. I'm first going to generate a digital elevation model, or DEM, using my LiDAR point cloud dataset by generating a surface using only the ground returns. First I'm going to import the LAS data into the QTT gridded surface format. In the LAS import dialog, I'm going to click on the classification button choose Filter using Classification, and choose only the ground points. Ensuring that I've chosen an acceptable grid sampling size, I'm going to click Go to generate the surface model. Now that I have my surface model generated, I'm going to need to save it. 
I'm saving the model as a QTT surface model. Now I'll clear that model from the viewer and load in the point cloud. Now that I've loaded in the point cloud, I'm going to return to the Analysis menu and choose AGL Analyst. I'm going to select the second radio button for Use External Model and click on the button Select Model. I'm going to select the QTT model, the DEM, that I just generated from the ground returns. As we did with the Auto Calculate Ground Estimate method, I'm going to choose to manually specify my minimum maximum values and then apply the vertex colors. Zooming into the area where we notice some problems with the auto calculate method, we'll see that now that those issues have been resolved by using an existing surface model. Returning to the AGL Analyst tool, we'll now explore some of the AGL filtering capabilities. To access these, click on the AGL filtering button. The AGL filtering capabilities allow you to remove points from the model based on a set criteria. Let's choose to filter below. By sliding the elevation bar down, you can see that we continuously remove points based on the above ground level elevation value. Breakpoints allow you to symbolize points within a certain above ground elevation class and then even export those points. To add breakpoints, simply enter the value and click Add Breakpoint. Left click in the breakpoint range whose color you want to set and choose Set Color. Select the color and click OK. Then click Apply Vertex Colors. Now our model displays in magenta all those points between 5 and 10 meters above ground. Right clicking on this breakpoint area and choosing Export Points gives us options to export those points to either LAS or ASCII XYZ format. As the AGL values are also part of the QTA attribute table, we can use QTA attribute analysis to do similar AGL filtering. From the analysis menu, choose QTA attribute analysis, QTA continuous attribute filtering. From the drop down menu, choose the AGL attribute. Let's select Filter Above, and just as we did before, by sliding the bar, we can continuously remove points from the model. Just as with the AGL filtering, you can even choose to crop the model. This will make the attribute filtering changes permanent. AGL filtering techniques can be applied to locate obscured features. In this case, we're peeling away the tree canopy to reveal a structure that would otherwise be undetectable. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit the Applied Imagery website for more quick train modeler videos and check back often as new modules are being added all the time.